Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to take a look at um, uh, Uchen Amber Lu's code for uh, implementing Cox Ross Rutenstein model and Jarrah Rudd. And um, first thing I uh, should do here is open up the Anaconda Navigator um, and uh, from there launch uh, Jupyter Netbook. And then what I'll try to do is implement the same format uh, of code with the same uh, frames and just look at the uh, how the data is inputted in and uh, the data that, and graphs that uh, come back. Okay, so uh, the implementation here, Cox, Ross, Rubenstein, um, but just for uh, European options. As far as I can see, and likewise for Jarra Rudd, um, European option. Um, I don't think there's any specifications here for um, American options, um, and then uh, some nice graphs as well, which uh, have some uh, pedagogic uh, uh, scope. Okay, so um, I'll go into Anaconda Navigator launch. Uh, the Jupyter Notebook, uh, that generally is quite fast in loading up. I have, uh, I'm going to put this file uh, into my OneDrive. I already have a Python folder and I'll create uh, a new folder. Um, I can change the title afterwards. Um, so I'll say new um, folder and then I'll go into folder two, it should be empty, and then new and Python three. So that will give me then the, I can put in here, uh, Amber Lou's, uh, Amber Lou, uh, code, Python code for CRR, Cox Ross Rubenstein and Jaro Rudd. Okay, so I'll just rename and uh, I'll go back into GitHub and I'll just copy and paste uh, each of these frames. So in a moment I'll just um, pause the video and I will have loaded in using the same sequence of frames. So I'll just paste in here, paste. And then I will uh, shift enter or shift return and um, I'll maintain the same um, frames as here as uh, Amber Lou. Okay, so I'll pause. Okay, so this is Amber Lou's code for uh, running a Cox Ross Rubenstein tree. Okay, so I'll just put the name in. I shouldn't forget anyway. Um, to uh, implement the code in Python here in the Jupyter Notebook, I just uh, hold down shift and enter uh, again for the, this next segment of code which is basically uh, in the Cox Ross Rutenstein tree we set out the values of u and d and the risk neutral probability and basically we need to invoke math the math libraries uh, date time because we're estimating uh, we input in an um, expiry date and from that then we've got to extract the um, expiration time period and um, we are putting in some graphs and the library then from the pandas and we need to construct the data frame as well so um, in the second frame here um, we have to estimate u and d these are the cox ross rubenstein um, values for u and d we have pu the risk neutral probability one minus pu is the risk neutral probability of going down in the tree and then we have um uh, if you like a discount factor for each time step where n is the number of steps t is the period and um, with the build specify uh, the tree right the values that it's an array uh, we have to build a tree, a stock price tree, so that's, uh, and we have to also estimate, okay, so we have to build 
a, a tree, so this is the for the terminal values of the tree. We have to estimate the intrinsic values, and then we've got to estimate, we've got to apply backward induction on the cox ross rubinstein tree. Now for the for Jarrow Rudd tree, uh, same as before, except the value for U and D is different. But otherwise this I would suspect is just the same. So we've the same implementation in terms of the terminal prices for the uh, s uh, stock price in the tree and then the backward induction. Uh, so it's the same code as such. And then they and okay, so let's just uh, shift enter, and then we're on to the next segment here, next frame of code, which is just for inputting in the uh, parameter values for each of the trees. So let's just hit enter, sh uh, shift enter, and what is the current stock price? One hundred. Uh, what's the strike price? One hundred. Uh, what's the expiration date? It's currently the 4th of the 7th. So I, I will use the same uh, April uh, 0, the 7th of April or April 7th. And we're going to, to expiry date is one year from now, so 2020. And we use the four digits. And then what's the continuously compounded rate? Continuously uh, compounding risk free rate, 5%. And the volatility is 20. Um, and okay, so we've inputted in the data. Then I go back into uh, GitHub again. And so what's left to be done? Once we put in uh, the data, then we want to build the frame for examining the inputs. Okay, so we come back in and paste that in, paste that code in. Again, it's uh, shift enter. Okay, these are the parameter inputs. Go back to GitHub one more time. And now we want to generate output and we want to do so for both Cox, Roth, for Cox, Roth, Rubenstein and Jarrah Rudd for both a call and a put. Okay, now because I've put different values in, I'm going to get different output. Um, okay, so we'll just paste, but the European call option should be 1045, okay, and we get 1045, uh, okay, 1044, I'm sure if we put in a higher number of steps in our tree, um, here we've uh, gone with a 1000 step tree, uh, that's a little bit low, uh, execution seems quite fast, which is kind of I wouldn't have anticipated that for Python. It's normally considered to be slow. Um, but here, uh, the estimation is quite fast. Again, estimating the European option is generally faster than, than estimating an American option because the American option, which we don't have here, the American option generally includes more uh, a nuanced set of steps um, and more decision rules in the... Uh, uh, the in, in terms of the backward induction. Okay, so anyway, our output is relatively fast. Um, and last thing then, that, uh, in terms of the code here in GitHub, was to plot and to plot convergence. Okay, so uh, that's something of interest. There's the one way to consider convergence is that as we increase the number of steps in the tree, do we actually um does the value of the option does its variability reduce and okay so let's just try and see and we might consider how long it takes to run that estimation okay so we'll shift and enter and normally that should take a little while because um, we have 5000 uh, steps if we look at the code here it says start at 50 Steps go up to 5,000 steps and do it in increments of 50. So the step size is increasing. And we go 50, 100, 150, 
and then um, up to 5,000. So that actually is is quite a few um, estimations to make. And of course, we're not just doing it once, we're doing it uh, twice, because we're considering this for Cox Ross Rubenstein. We're also considering this for uh, the Jarrah Rudd tree. Um, okay, so I might pause and we're probably already one minute in, so uh, we'll have a look at this in a moment. Okay, so the estimation here has been completed. It's a fairly significant uh, estimation. It's taken about three minutes to run, I would say maybe four. Um, so, uh, but normally that would be fairly typical with a binomial tree, uh, whether regardless of what kind of IDE you're in, it's it's going to be fairly uh, intensive in terms of using computer resources. Uh, in terms of the runtime here, it wasn't too bad. I think about four minutes or so. I didn't pay uh, uh, very close attention, but. Um, it wouldn't be unusual that estimation time uh, would be a little drawn out. So I think that's uh, basically it. What we observed then, um, in terms of the estimation, do I want to run this again? Um, this runs runs one fifty against the same CRR two. Okay, in this case, it's a put option. And here we have a call option. We have a okay put option and before call. And what's just implemented here is a call option, and we're getting this uh, nice convergence. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there.